But that service continues in your bulletins. Thank you for joining us today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O God, that we may follow the example of your faithful servant Barnabas, who, seeking not his own renown but the well-being of your church, gave generously of his life and substance for the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And so it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was at Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. At that time prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world. And this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a member of the court of Herod, the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. 
And after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. This is the word of the Lord. Speak, I pray thee, gentle Jesus. Oh, how passing sweet thy words. Breathing for my troubled spirit. Peace which never earth affords. Oh, the world's distracting voices, all the tempting tones of ill. At thy voice, so mild and glorious, are subdued. And all is still. Tell me, thou art my whole Savior. Speak a true assurance clear. Banish all my darkness givings. Fill my doubting, calm my fear. In thy righteousness I triumph. In thy wisdom I'll be wise. In thy robes I'm perfect beauty. In thy comes from Matthew, the 10th chapter and the 7th verse. As you go, Jesus said, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment, take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I'm sending you out as sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as I was preparing to speak <clears throat> to you today, this on the Feast of St. Barnabas, uh, I went and looked up a little bit about this, this man about whom I have to admit I didn't know much. We heard a story in Acts of the Apostles today that included Barnabas, and that's actually where we get most of the direct canonical information about him. Uh, he was born Joseph, according to the tradition of the early Christians, one of the prominent, cr prominent Christian disciples in Jerusalem. And when we find him this morning, he's sent out um, to go to where Gentiles are being converted, Greek Gentiles, to kind of see what's going on, because we're told as of that at this point, the good news was being shared mostly 
among the Jews. And so Barnabas arrives and could have said a thousand things upon experiencing the conversion of Gentiles in the church, of non-Jewish persons. But we're told that he gives thanks to God. He finds himself praising God for this new way in which the gospel is being proclaimed. It's a gospel for everyone. It's good news for all mankind. And, and this is so vitally important because for us, it seems like this is just a no-brainer, so to speak. Hasn't it always been that way? Dear friends, it has not always been that way. And it's not that way today. It is a simple truth that even Christians divide themselves one from another. This is an Episcopal church. Right across the street is a United Methodist church. Diagonally from that is a Baptist church. And if you go down just one block from us, there's a historically African-American Episcopal church. Two of the same stripe, but different colors. We love, do we not, to divide ourselves. And if we're not careful, those same divisions can be excuses that we use to divide ourselves from each other. And please don't hear me panning denominations. There are something like 29,000 of them, Christian denominations, probably Five of those represent 98% of all Christians. But, but the truth is there's lots of different ways we can worship this same Lord. And, and when we use it as ways to engage our community, those who don't know the Lord, then much like having different last names, they might not divide us. There are different ways to actually bring us together. That's not bad. But when they divide us one from each other and help us to think that we are better than or that others are not deserving of or that some are out and we are in, well, then they become antithetical to the whole of what the gospel means. I don't think it's an accident that we're looking at Barnabas today, even though there's lots of wonderful things after that acts. Uh, scripture about what Barnabas did, but I want to focus in on the fact that when he encountered people receiving the good news who were not part of the team, they weren't part of the plan, they weren't supposed to be, maybe not officially included, he gave thanks to God and he embraced it. Christ's love and reconciliation for all mankind. And so, so with that in mind, it's not an accident for me that three weeks hence from Pentecost, this has just kind of been on my heart, that if we go all the way back to our scripture um, in the Old Testament, in the story of the Tower of Babel, one of the things post-flood that the one human family had done is they, they, they begun to communicate with an invasion plan. Together, they would build a tower to heaven on their own steam. And we're told as a part of that story, it's become a cliche, we call it babbling, that the Lord realized that the invasion force was being planned and, and since they'd not been invited, um, we're told that the Lord descended there and confused their speech. And that, whether you take that as a metaphor or whether you take that as literally true, uh, that confusion of speech is where the divisions of mankind came from after the flood. And that's where mankind was. That's where human society was, Jews and Greeks. That's where Phoenicians and, and, and Syrophoenicians, and that's where all of the tribes of man, black and white, yellow and brown, came from. They were divided. And yet, in the story writ large, we're told three weeks ago, that with the gift of the Holy Spirit, tongues as of fire in that upper room came upon those disciples. 
And we're told that on some level, we don't fully know or understand exactly how, each of those persons from all over the world who happened to be in Jerusalem on that day, no accident, heard those things in their own native tongue. What do you think they were saying? Imagine for a moment that what you long to hear is being spoken by someone who shouldn't know how to speak to you because they're different. Imagine that what you long to feel in your heart comes to you from a place you've never anticipated it because they didn't or to part of your family or your tribe. And I think there's a huge lesson in this for us, especially today. Can anyone doubt that we live in divided times? That why Barnabas is called full of grace and the Holy Spirit is because with that Holy Spirit, what he does is seek to find ways to connect us one to another human being to human being, through Christ. This is what the good news is. That that which had been divided since Babel, since human beings had the temerity to launch an invasion, God will launch an invasion and open the way back to one unified human family. That unified human family can only happen. I don't know about y'all. I have so many hang-ups and predispositions and, and ways that I, labels that I put on myself, Episcopal and, and Christian and Protestant and, and, and perhaps even lately white or male or island and mainland. Go down the list. We can think of a myriad ways to divide ourselves one from another. And where those labels seek to increase our human families and understanding of how differences can be beautiful, wonderful. They're absolutely wonderful. But, but that's not what's been happening lately. And I would, I would suggest that the whole core of Pentecost is that God's profligate grace through the sacrificing, reconciling love of His Son, Jesus Christ, is not restricted to anyone whom He has made in His image. And that when we embrace that, that profligate grace, the only way being through the operation of God's Holy Spirit gifted to us all in Pentecost, that when we do that, it always builds us up. It always unites us. It always spreads the kingdom. And it is always in love. That, dear friends, is such good news on this day, the Feast of St. Barnabas. Amen. And now, let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. For B, for Walker, for Sue, for Nora, for Noble, for Mady Van Walsen, for John, for Faye, for Diana, for Deacon Ed, for Bubba, and for Barbara, and especially today for the family of Kit Mann and Jug McKenzie, for all doctors, nurses, first responders, and caregivers. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Bless all who minister to the suffering, Lord, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek you and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin 
in our lives, in our nation, in our church, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. And then, Almighty God, giver of life and health, hear the prayers of your people for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us confess the ways in which we've divided ourselves from God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of his Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. cameraman today. Thank you, holy friends who have long been a part of this sweet worship service and the miracles that come from the reconciling love of Christ. You know, Barnabas, we're told, was martyred for the church. He was martyred for the church because in the apocryphal version of the story, 
People wanted to hear what he had to say. And he brought people together who weren't supposed to be together. That always threatens power. But it's at the very heart of the good news. Dear friends, you might have wondered, why didn't he say anything about the gospel? Well, this is the gospel because I'm amazed, at least in my own life, how often I want to cram good news down people's throats who don't really care to hear it. But then there's so many out there that desperately need it. Listen with your heart to the reconciling love of Jesus Christ that is for all those. And then spend some time with eyes wide open looking for those that so desperately need to hear it. Especially those that don't look like you, don't live where you live, don't maybe think like you think. And then let the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you, be with you, and remain with you always. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.